Rock and Roll Geek Show 826. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Saturday, May 12th, 2018, and it is 8.19 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. Saturday night, and I cannot think of a better way to spend a Saturday night than to sit in my office slash podcast studio and spin some tunes and drink some beer and talk rock with my friends of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. All right, friends, let's spin some tunes, shall we? All right, I got a brand new song. So this was posted on on the uh, Facebook by friend of the. Sh- I first saw this on the Facebook by a friend of the show, Adam Turetsky, who who got me this computer that I'm doing the show on, uh, and also somebody else posted it on the forums of, on the uh, Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page. A brand new song from a band called Wildlife. They are a great band. Uh, Casey came on and we did a track by track of their last album. And they have a new 7-inch coming out on Wicked Cool Records. Uh, the A-side is called Come On Christine, which is a decent song, garagey sounding. But the B-side is a fucking fantastic song. And that's what I'm going to play for you right now, friends. It's the B-side of Wildlife 7-inch coming out on Wicked Cool Records. This song is called These Days.
There you go. Brand new wildlife. That song is called These Days. They are on, they're going on tour, and they are coming to the West Coast, and they're going to be playing San Francisco or Oakland, somewhere in the Bay Area. And I will be there, friends. I can't wait. That song, I don't know what you think of that song, but I think that song is, is fantastic, too. And that's as good as they get to me. That's right in my wheelhouse, as they say. All right. Speaking of in my wheel, all right, enough of that. <laughs> I would like to thank the people who donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show because, as you know, friends, this Rock and Roll Geek Show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled death without your donation. So let's thank some people, shall we? Let me find some music to play. There's a brand new album from B.B. Buell, my, uh, my beloved B.B. Buell. She has a new album called Bearing It All, Greetings from Nashbury Park. And actually, it's quite good, believe it or not. I believe it because um, B.B. Buell is just as much, just a big part of rock and roll history as, to me, Aerosmith or ACD. She's she's been there from the glory days of rock and roll and... uh, my opinion, she should be she should be in the history books with Aerosmith and everybody else. Brand new BB Buell. What am I talking about? Donations. I'm so in the background. I'm going to play brand new BB Buell. Speaking of BB Buell, uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to the Rock and Pot Expo again this year. Believe it or not, I was invited back. Can you believe that? <laughs> After all that went down last year, I am invited back, and I am glad I'm invited back because. I had a great time last year, so I'm looking forward to coming back. Here is the information about the Rock and Rob Pod Expo. It's going to be a lot. There's going to be uh, some good people coming. I'm going to try to get BB Buell to show up to this thing because uh, she lives in Nashville. It would be kind of cool to um, to see BB Buell in person. Maybe have her on the show and. She likes to talk, so hopefully I can get her to come out. But appearing at the Rock and Pot Expo this year, Vinnie Vincent from Kiss. How about that, I'm not a Vinnie Vincent fan, but I know a lot of people are, and um, he was in hiding for a long time, and he, and he made the one appearance that everybody came to. So he's going to be doing it at the Rock and Pot Expo. Maybe I'll get BB get uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll get BB Buell to interview Vinnie Vincent on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. That would be nice. Brian Head Welch from Corn is going to be there. Christopher Williams from Accept is going to be there. Michael Visera from Loudness will be there. Gary Corbett from Kiss and Cinderella. I don't know what this guy did in Kiss, but he's going to be there. Sandy Gennaro, drummer, great drummer, drummer extraordinaire, is going to be there. Toby Wright is going to be there. Michael Wagner is going to be there. They're having a pre. Uh, pre-expo party uh, concert, Angel, uh, Frank Domino and Punky Meadows from Angel are, are tentatively scheduled to play. Uh, great Bad Company band, a uh, tribute band with um, Sandy Gennaro on drums and this guy that I had on the show at the last Rock and Pied Expo. Um, what's the guy's name? Oh. Uh, what is his name? Mangus, Greg Mangus, great guy and rock historian, a fellow rock and roll geek. He's his his bad company band is going to be there. Uh, Tora Tora is also uh, tentatively scheduled to be there as well. So if you can make it out to Nashville, friends, I would like to hang out with you. Come out to Nashville. Come to the Rock and Pod Expo. It's ten dollars. I'm going to post a link to the um to the to the event bright where you can buy tickets ten dollars gets you in come say hi to me i will give you a tecate from my um 30 pack which i will have on the stage or on the stage on at my table and i'm also doing some perks as well there's gonna be like uh I don't know, you can pay a certain amount of money and you can have dinner with me i'll buy you dinner you can co-host the show with me all kinds of things like that it is going to be Saturday, August 25th, 2018. So I'm going to be back in Nashville. Looking forward to seeing you there, my friends. All right, back to the donations. 
So my, my, my point was, I'm trying to get B.B. Buell to be at the Podcast Expo. All right, enough of that. All right, in the background, B.B. Buell. So there are several ways you can donate to the show, friends. I kind of like this. Get a little bit of uh, little Lou Reed sound. You can donate on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash rnrgeek like Mike Brown, my childhood friend who I went to my first concert with. He donates $25 every episode. Thank you to Joe Pollack. Donate $6.66 every episode. Thank you to Robert Harvey for the $5 every episode. Hold on, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate. I'm almost out of my second Tecate. Ah, I'm now officially out of my second Tecate. Best one of the day. Thank you to Brad Schick. Donates $5 every episode. Thank you to Betty Wood. For the five dollars every episode, thank you to Daniel Segan for the five dollars every episode. Thanks to Michael Street, friend of mine, who just sent me, by the way, another package. He sent me a uh, vinyl rec- from Record Store Day, which I'm going to play later on the show if I have time. It's a three-album set exclusive. David Bowie, Welcome to the Blackout, live in London, '78, from the. Uh, Low Heroes Tour, 1978. Triple album, Record Store Day exclusive. Thank you, Michael Street, for that. He also sent me a Scott Story Tribute Show t-shirt, and he donates $5 every episode. Thank you to Ken Kennedy for the $5 every episode. Thanks to my good friend, Chiaki Hinohara, for the $5 every episode. Thank of the Metal Moment and Japanese Metalhead Podcast. Pardon me, I'm burping up this fine Tecate. <laughs> Thank you to Brian Springer for the $5 every episode. Thanks to my podcast mentor and co-host of Mad at Dad and host of the Evil Genius Chronicles, Dave Slusser, for the $5 every episode. Thanks to Paul Rube or Raub for the $2.25 every episode. Thank God for that extra 25 cents. Thank you to Patrick Shanahan for the $2 every episode. Thanks to Paul Underwood for the $2 every episode. Thank you to Mario Zoth. Zothy9 on the Rock and Roll Geek iPhone or uh, on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page and the forums. Thanks to Bruce McMillan for the $2 every episode. Thanks to Matthew Hunt, fellow kayaker, for the $2 every episode. Thank you to Eric Stowell for the $2. Another um BB Buell, look, cross my legs. I like this. Reminds me a little bit of Mata Hoople, Ian Hunter. I've been here before. Maybe you think you know the score. All right, where was I? Thank you to Eric Stower for the two dollars. Thanks to Arnie Sna- Arnie Stash, Arnie Stash for the one dollar every episode. Thanks to Ron Embody for the one dollar every episode. Thanks to Three Legs Four Wheels for the dollar. Thanks to Bonstone for the one dollar. Thanks to Mike Dixon for the dollar. Thanks to John Richardson for the dollar. Thanks to Corey Kohler for the one dollar. I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh no! <sighs> You can also donate on PayPal. Links at rockandrollgeek.com, by the way, where you can donate. Zach Erlocker, thank you for the $20 every episode. What else we have? Invisible. How about Invisible? Thanks to Zach Erlocker for the $20. Thanks to Elodi Johns, my first girlfriend, for the $20. Thanks to James Venners for the $10. Thanks to Jason Shepard for the $10. It was a little bit of BB. Dogging me all around. The BB while I grab another beer. 
the darkest place in you So you can't put me down You don't seem to see Or wanna let me be I don't have to run Go ahead, have your okay. fun Cause you can't get to me Ah, where was I? Thank you to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thanks to Todd Cunningham, friend of mine and friend of the show for the $10. Thanks to friend of mine and friend of the show, Ralph Miller, for the $10, who I saw last week at the Featherwood show at the um, Ivy Room in Albany. Fun show. It was nice to see him there. Thanks to Dave Jackson and the School of Podcasting for the $10. Thanks to Jerry and Chef. Oh, Jerry? No. Thank you to Sherry and Jeff key for the ten dollars thanks to bj lisco for the ten dollars bj lisco sent me an email i'm gonna read that later on the show dave franco thank you for the ten dollars dave franco thank you to dale roller for the five dollars thanks to richard strom for the five dollars thanks to andrew howe for the five dollars thanks to kelly mitchell for the five dollars thanks to chris del grande happy birthday chris del grande for the five dollars Thanks to Jer O'Carroll for the $5. I'm Thanks to John Offenloch for the $5. Thanks to Richard Fusey for the $5. Thanks to Brett Garski for the $5. Thanks to Craig Vassiloff for the $5. Thanks to Sigmund Heidacher for the $5. Thanks to John Boveri for the $5. Thanks to John Tennis for the $5. Thanks to Greg Long for the $5. Thanks to Jeff CA $5. Thanks to Eric Lentz $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell for another $5. Thanks to Peter Spark for the $2. Thanks to John Skiller for the $2. Thanks to Michael Williams for the $2. <sighs> Thanks to... I lost my place. <sighs> Thank you to Adrian Bashan. On the Bosch Rock on the forums and on the Rock and Roll Geek iPhone or uh, Facebook page. Thanks to Deborah Dreyfus for the $2, if that's your real name, and Richard Fusey. Thank you for another $2. He upped his donation. Thank you to Bradford Page for the $2. Thanks to Lassie Satvenhagen for the $2. And finally, thank you to William Moffat for the $1. This show is, a, is, as Adam Curry says on the No Agenda, this show is a value for value. Whatever you think the show is worth, friends, if you think the show is not worth a nickel, don't donate anything. If you think it's worth a million dollars, donate a million dollars. And if you're too cheap to donate or you think the show's okay, but you don't have the money to donate, you can just go to the rockandrollgeek.com page and... Click on the Amazon banner. Go there before you buy your big screen TV, and I will get a kickback, friends. Or if you buy your Roomba vacuum cleaner, which I just bought my wife for uh, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, all mothers around. I'm, <clears throat> my mouth is getting parts. Let me take another sip of this fine Tecate. Ah, you can also send me things in the mail like... Um, like this person did. His name is Rodney Cross. Did Rodney Cross donate too? Is he a donator too? I think he might be. He sent me a bench-made knife, handmade bench-made knife. Michael Butler in a note. Michael Butler, the podcasts are appreciated here in the Pacific Northwest. I had this knife made as my thanks. Had the podcast names engraved on the blades. And I'm gonna, so I'm going to open the knife here. In addition, oh, look at here. Two crisp $20 bills. Thank you, Rodney Cross, for the $40. And the knife here. I'm pulling it out. Very nice knife made by Benchmade. It folds out. On one blade, on one side of the blade, it says Rock and Roll Geek. And on the other side, it says The Lonely Kayaker. Thank you so much, Rodney Cross. I really appreciate it. That was uh, very thoughtful of you. So... That's another way you can donate to the show, friends. You can send me shit in the mail. I appreciate it. And I don't know how to close this knife, and I'm going to probably cut myself trying to close it. So I'm going to, I'll just figure it out. And I did not cut myself. All right. Thank you, friends, for donating. 
Without your donations, this show will die a horrible putrid stench filled, accidentally slicing your throat with a knife handmade by Benchmade Knives. Kind of death. All right. I have an audio comment. Hello, caller. Hey, Michael Butler. It's uh, Bruce, the rock and roll banker, hey, Macmillan Rod. from hey, San Bruce. Antonio, Texas. San Antonio! All right. And in with some stuff. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm super great. Couldn't be better. Thanks for asking. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm doing the same. Uh, uh, just want to let you know, I just bought some stuff on uh, Amazon. Oh. So I went through your your website and I clicked appreciate on Amazon it, so you get a little kick back there. So if, <laughs> thank you. Just so remind much. everybody to go do that. And yes. Help you out a little bit. And I know. Let me rewind that because I might as well. So now I'm on a plug fast. I might as well do that again. Let you know, I just bought some stuff on uh, Amazon. So I went through your your website and clicked on Amazon, so you get a little kick back there. So if just remind everybody to go do that and help yeah. you out a little bit. Thank you. And I noticed when I was on your website, you've got like two Uh-oh. pictures that you know rotate. Yeah, the uh, banner of your studio and you know pictures on the wall and whatever. And I noticed one of them in the lower right hand corner. I uh, had a picture of a band. Couldn't tell who it was, but it said San Antonio, Texas. So I was just curious uh, what see. that was all about. Let me see here. Let me look on the Rock and Roll Geek page. Let me look on rockandrollgeek.com. Uh, let's see. On the lower left, San Antonio, Texas. Hmm. I don't see that. I do not see it on the lower right-hand side. Oh, San Antonio, Te- Oh, yes. That is a... Aerosmith, Girls of Summer, Backstage Pass from October 28, 2002. It's a 3D backstage pass, a VIP pass from when they played San Antonio, Texas. I did not go to that show, but I did get backstage at Aerosmith when they played in 2002, uh, probably the day after or a couple days after in San Francisco. Billy Rowe knew somebody who worked uh, at the venue and he got us backstage and the and we were standing behind, uh, by the side of the stage and um, one of the monitor guys said, what, what band are you guys in? And we said, uh, American Harper. He goes, oh, you guys are on the bill tomorrow in Sacramento, aren't you? And we went, uh, yeah, that's right, we are. And he said, well, you guys can hang out here at the mon- with me at the monitors. Watch, enjoy the show from here. So we watched the entire Aerosmith show from the stage right next to the monitor guy. Drank free beer next to the stage. It was awesome. And after the show, and, and so I was, I, as I was walking, um, this backstage pass was sitting on the floor was like just laying on the ground and I picked it up and brought it home with me. And, uh, after the show, we were hanging out by the dressing rooms. Joe Perry walked by smoking a big fat cigar and Steven Tyler walked up to us and just carried on a conversation with us for like 10 minutes. Like he was our best friend. We left that place on clouds, man. (laughs) So that's where that, that's what says San Antonio, Texas. Um, Rock and roll banker. All right, back to you. Um, been to a bunch of shows lately. Most of them you won't care about. <laughs> you don't know so that. So I will just mention them real quick. My wife's a big, you know, she's a San Antonio native. So she likes country, so I go to country shows with her. So we saw uh, the rodeo is a big thing down here. They oh, I love up. going to the rodeo, by the way. I have a good, I've been to many rodeos, and I always enjoy them. For two weeks, different bands every night. And there's mostly country, of course, and... It might be one one rock one rock act this year. It was fo- a foreigner. I like foreigner, so I do care about that. Even though there's no original members, but I like foreigner. My favorite foreigner song, Star Rider, from I believe the first album. I saw Cheap Trick open for Foreigner. First time I ever saw Cheap Trick, and the first time I ever saw Foreigner. I think it was the uh, <clears throat> I don't know whatever album Foreigner had out when Cheap Trick had In Color out. It was the In Color tour. Cheap Trick. But I was there to see Foreigner, and I had never heard of Cheap Trick, but uh, I went out and bought In Color the day after that show. Obviously, the cover band, because there is nobody original yeah. left in Foreigner. <laughs> Didn't get to go because I was out of town. 
that night, but we went and saw Alan Jackson, so uh, that's all I'll say about that. All right. Well, I, not, I don't know Alan Jackson's music, but I, I'm up for a, co- a country concert. I'm kind of getting into country a little bit. I like to listen on Sirius. They have a, a station called Red, White, and Booze, and they play a lot of Southern rock. So, okay, Alan Jackson. Um, then Floor's Country Store is a little... Just a little country, <laughs> country restaurant, cool little place, about 15 minutes from my house in northwest San Antonio. It's in a little town called Lotus, uh-huh. and they got an outdoor uh, stage in their backyard, essentially. There might be 500 people might fit back there, typically just open seating, but sometimes they'll put a couple of rows of chairs out there. But uh, it, back in the day, Willie Nelson used to play that place constantly, but... It's just a, it's a really cool little joint. So anyway, we went and saw Steve Warner there. I don't uh, know. So that's all I'll say about that. I don't know Steve Warner either, but I'm gonna have to check those guys out because I do. When I'm, whenever I go visit my daughter, she loves country music. She likes like modern country, so um, she'll have it on the country station. And there is a, there's a couple of uh, guilty pleasure that are modern country songs that I like. One is. Uh, Buy me a truck. I think that's what it's called. I forget. I don't know who. I don't know the guy's name who sings it. But uh, it can no. Buy me a boat. It can buy me a boat. It can buy me a boat. It can buy me a truck to pull it. Yeah, that's a good song. And I was also one. Uh, Dirks Bentley has a song called "Drunk on a Plane" that I really like a lot too. <laughs> All right, back to you, rock and roll banker. <laughs> kind of a mellow. Uh, he's a really talented guitar player, though, man. I mean, country, again. Uh, believe it or talented. not, there are some way, way talented guitar players in country music. That guy, Brad Paisley, I don't know much of his music, but I've heard him play guitar, and the guy is a shredder. Oh, chick songs, but and my wife loves him, but I was really impressed. He was a super cool dude. I and mean, he and his brother, his brother's in the band, and uh, just really Really good guitar player. So anyway, on and and I saw Blackberry Smoke there too. Okay. And I know you've mentioned them before. I don't think you've. Yeah, listened. I don't know much of their music, but Eddie Trunk talks about them all the time. I think I might have some of their music on my iTunes. Do them too much, or you know, you're that much of a fan or whatever. I'm a friggin' huge fan, man. I, I think uh, uh, Biters were on tour with Blackberry Smoke, if I'm not mistaken. They're unbelievably talented. Uh, Charlie Starr, that dude, I mean, he's he's an amazing guitar player, and he's the singer, and he writes most of the songs, and and uh, I don't know, I was leaning on the stage for that one, and that was just a great show. I won't go into that one too much. Uh, and then got to see, well, the main reason I'm calling is got to see Judas Priest. Uh-huh. Last show in the U.S. Uh, for the U.S. leg of the tour. Oh, is that Last tour Tuesday over night. already? Today's the... Wow, that went fast. Saturday, so it was last Tuesday. And uh, I'll go into that in a minute. And then last night I saw, went to Flores Country Store again with my wife, and uh, they had some reserved seating for this show, just like, I don't know, they probably had about 10 rows, and then the rest was GA. And anyway, my wife and I got third row, and uh, saw Lyle Lovett. Okay. I'm a freaking huge Lyle Lovett fan. Uh-huh. Again, it doesn't fit your eh. rock and roll geek. I don't format. know his music that much, but I know a lot of people like Lyle Lovett, and um, I don't have anything against the guy. I just don't know his music. I have to mention, he's just another unbelievably talented dude. And one of his old good uh, college buddies is a guy named Robert Earl Keen. He used and- to bang, um, or excuse me, he used to go out with Julia, Jul- what's that actress's name? Julia, uh, oh, you know who I'm talking about. He's uh, pretty popular down, at least down these parts. He's got a lot of uh, good good songs out, too, and he came out and played with Lyle. Oh, shit, probably half the show. So everybody loved that. But I did want to mention, I was the guy that uh, called in and mentioned that you trashed <laughs> uh, Lou Reed and uh, Metallica on the, on the uh, Lulu album. And that was episode 452. And you're right. I, I, I went back and listened to it a little bit again. You didn't trash. You gave it a 5 out of 10. Oh, and you, yeah. you, you know, you that's kind of trashing it. <laughs> thumbs up for trying something new. You just kind of kept on Lou Reed a little bit. So that's why, I, again, that new Sensations album. 
like you played that one track. Well, uh, like I said, I've I've softened my stance on Lou Reed. I I kind of um, I'm backing off my dislike of Lou Reed a little bit. Which was cool. Uh, is one of my favorite albums. So, but in uh, to uh, get into that, you were like you didn't realize that people could play old shows from your app. So. Yeah, you can. I, I bought your app a long time ago. So everybody, go buy Michael's app. There you go. I think it's like three bucks. I, and I, is it three? I thought it was a dollar ninety nine. Maybe they raised the price. I don't know. I get nothing from that, by the way. That's the minimum that they charge. I think I get no. I, I get something. I think I get like maybe seventy five cents or something. Seventy cents or for each app I sell or something like that. But uh, occasionally I will put bonus content on the app and. For instance, I had put the uh, Alice Cooper Me Too, or not Me Too, Me Alice biography in PDF form. I put that up before. I have not ever put links to where you can download albums, classic albums, because that would just be wrong. But lots of lots of bonus content. So you never know when I will post bonus content on the Rock and Roll Geek app. By the way, there's a link on the show notes where you can get that app. I saved, I went through the show list a long time ago when I starred some that, you know, as favorites that looked like, you know, they'd be interesting. I did not know that you could listen to back, um, cat, back deleted episodes. So that's a good way to, um, if you can't find a, if, if there's an episode that doesn't play on the rockandrollgeek.com website because it was on the Mevio servers, you can listen to it on the app, which I had never known. Uh, uh, and so, you know, now and then I'll, I'll listen to an old show when you haven't posted for a while. And uh, I think you can go back to 2000, 2006. I know you can. I did it the other day after you, you mentioned that you were surprised. And uh, uh, you started in 2006, I think, right? No, I so started that, in 2004. Man, maybe all the way back. And that's cool, man. So... Everybody go buy the app. There you go. And this guy, so what else? What plug, else? plug, plug. Um, yeah. All right. Judas Priest, last show in the U.S. Uh, I don't know how we did it, but me and a buddy got front row, had front row seats. We were on the left side of the stage if you are facing the stage, so right in front of Richie Faulkner. Uh, it was a great show. Black, Black Star writers killed it. Ricky Warwick has such a great voice, and he just gets into it, man. And, and Damon Johnson, great guitar player. And the funny thing about him was I was, I, you know, I kept looking at him and I'm thinking, and I don't know why, subconsciously I kept, Alice Cooper would pop into my mind. I think and, he played uh, with Alice Cooper for a while, didn't he? I had no idea why. I just thought, well, maybe he looks like him and, you know, maybe something, I, subconsciously he must look like him or something like that. So anyway, when we're driving back to uh, drop my buddy off at his car, we were, he was looking on his phone and just kind of look at the history of some different band members and apparently uh this damon johnson played with alice cooper there you go. in his band back in the day so uh, who knew uh somehow i must have recognized him and and uh what was cool about that it was he he would come over most of the time it was the bass player yeah. uh robbie crane yeah. that was right in front it was of us okay but damon he used would to come play over rat and, and rock out some solos, and he tossed out a pick, so I got one of his autographed picks, so that's super cool. All right. <laughs> um, and Robbie Crane, man, that dude, what a great bass player. Totally into it. Just the whole band was into it. Just the band, rocking. I will say this about Black Star Riders. Their sound wasn't that great when they played in San Francisco, but they gave it 120%. They really rocked as hard as they possibly could, which you got to appreciate in an opening band. And they and, had the crowd uh, going. I was too. watching Robbie Crane play that bass, man. That dude, he was all over it, and you could, I could, the sound was really good, so I could really hear uh, and pick out his bass lines. So that was super cool. They played about forty-five minutes. The crowd was, you know, a little thin opening act of three bands, so not a ton of people there. And you know, people in the front row and second row were pretty much standing up and getting into it, and everybody else was sitting on their ass. And, and you know, they were trying to get the crowd into it. And at one point, they were playing whatever song. And Ricky just stood, just stood and stared at the crowd. All, all these fuckers that were sitting there, sitting down. Just this 
like I'm gonna kick your ass. They had the crowd going and he in just San Francisco. Stared him down for like I'm not kidding, thirty seconds as the band played on, and he just stood there and stone stone still and just stared him down. It was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> and and some of them got off their ass finally. Uh, what else than Saxon? I mean, what do you say, man? I'm not a big Saxon fan, but. And I didn't know that much about them other than dem denim and leather and steel wheels, yeah, really. Wheels of steel, yeah. Ass. Same as me. They were really, really good. That Biff, he's got a, he's got a classic voice, man. That dude <laughs> yeah. can really sing. And, For an old man. And as far as the guitar players go, I was Paul Quinn. Uh, he was at the other, other end of the stage. He was on the, the right side of guy. the stage, so I couldn't see him real Real good. Oh my God, that guy's a ripping guitar player. Both of the guys are pretty it. ripping guitar players. Uh, that bass player is a ripping Doug's bass player. Scared. He's good too, but that, that other guy, I was like, I was wishing he was in front of us. The bass player is Nibs Carter. And I, you know what? That dude, that dude was totally into it. He was banging his head. I got some awesome video of him just whipping his head. And uh, you know what? He reminded me of you for some, just kind of the way he looks a little bit for some oh, reason. Oh boy. Uh, don't know if he's a good bass player. That guy's I mean, a ripping bass player. It looked to me like he was just playing the top two strings and kind of fucking around. But that dude, <laughs> he was just completely into it. So he was he was fantastic. That's why he they reminded played, you of me, because I only play the top two strings as well. <laughs> for, I don't know, a little over an hour, I guess. And then Judas Priest came out, and they played about an hour 45. You know, of course, they, they there was Black Sabbath was playing on the... War the pigs. system before they came out. And uh, I don't know, man. The set list is out there, so I won't go over it. And you, you saw the show, too. Yes. So it was great. But the, about three-quarters of the way through, they played a song that they said they hadn't played. They were going to do it just for us in San Antonio, last last show in the U.S., and blah, blah, blah. So uh, they were going to give us a treat, and they played a song they said they hadn't played in 37 years called Tyrant. And I don't know it, but... I did find it on Unleashed in the East, so I thought I would jam a little of it for you here. I like Rob Halford's voice during that during those old times. He has a different voice. He's not as metally, just more rock and roll. So anyway, that's Tyrant from Unleashed in the East live. Anyway, and at the end, they uh, at the end of the song, Rob walked off and he kind of muttered, "I knew we'd fuck it up." So I don't know, I don't know what they did wrong, but it rocked out. It was good. And there was this dude next to me that brought his kid. His kid was probably 14 years old, and and uh, he was kind of into it. Dad obviously was into it, and he kept trying, you know, we're leaning on the barrier the whole time, and he kept trying to show me the set list of the next song that's coming on. No, I, I don't want to see I wouldn't even it. look I don't at the damn phone. It. I would just kind of glance and then go, oh, yeah, nod, nod. Like, I don't want to know what's next, man. But uh, near the end of the show, he did stick it right in my face and showed that... Uh, uh, that Glenn Tipton was going to be uh, finishing up the last three songs with him, and I kind of knew that anyway. I knew he was he was showing up at some shows, and he'd showed up at the last one, I think, and I figured he'll probably be in San Antonio last last one of the tour and whatnot. So anyway, that's about it, man. It was awesome. I don't know what to say. Like I said, I, if I could shoot you some uh, some videos and pictures, I'll do it. Let me know how to how to do that if I can do it on your website or whatever, but your little solo. Oh, by the way, Richie Faulkner was right in front of us. Shredding guitar Holy player. Holy smokes, what a ripping. Yeah, I mean, he's great. He makes it look so effortless, too. Great guitar player. Like you said, uh, Ian Hill, I don't even think he... He, I don't think he moved two steps in any direction the entire night except for, you know, when he went off for the encore, but obviously uh, killing it. Uh, yeah, a little weird with, uh, what's his name, the producer playing guitar. He actually came out and played with Saxon too. He played, uh, oh hell, I forget his name now, but anyway. Andy Sneep. Uh, he came out and played a song with Saxon, just one song. 
and just came out in his jeans and a t-shirt. And then, uh, is it Jeff? Anyway, he came out, obviously he was all leathered up with Priest, and he was at the other end of the stage, so I didn't have to deal with that. I mean, obviously he's talented, but I didn't really want to see him. So luckily, uh, Richie Faulkner was right in front of us, and of course Rob Halford was all over the place, and he was right in front of us quite a few times, so like, it was awesome. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Hopefully this didn't go on too long. It's a pretty that's long, fine. long uh, that is fine. recording here. So uh, that's it, man. Stay frosty. Stay frosty, Take care. friend. You too can leave me an audio comment or sh- and or show review. Area code 706 rock That's area code 706 Or you can do the preferred way, like Bruce did. Mail- record it on your phone or a computer, or whatever, and email it to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. There you go. All right. Thanks, Bruce, Rock and Roll Banker. I really appreciate it. How about a brand new song from Ace Freely? He's got a new album. He's working on a new album. And supposedly Gene Simmons wrote a lot of the album with him. I don't know if he wrote this one. I don't think he did, but the uh, brand new Ace Freely called Bronx Boy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The professionalism is just unbelievable. Let me take that from the top. Better be careful, or you could disappear. You might be bought or sold, no one would even care. Brand new Ace Freely. Not bad. I like it. I'm not, I used to be a major Kiss fan. Now, eh, I don't really care that much, but I, like, I still like Ace Freely. And uh, he's playing in Berkeley, the same venue that we're playing with um, um, LA Guns. Why is my, my brain's getting fried? We're playing with L.A. Guns on uh, a Thursday night. I don't know the exact day, but it's in, at this place called Cornerstone in Berkeley. And that Monday is Ace Freely. I wish we were playing the Ace Freely show. And I just found out that 
Ah, I won't get into it. There's another band on the bill at the L.A. Gun Show, a Monkey's Tribute Band. And an L.A. Gun Show, Monkey's Tribute Band? All right, that's fine. Okay, I have a very... I'm not snorting coke. If you hear me sniffling, I have a major allergy attack today for some reason. So, uh... <sighs> do you buy that? I hope you do. Okay. All right, how about... From I haven't the done one of these in a while. The rock and roll geek. It's the douchebag clip of the week. All right. This douchebag clip of the week goes to the venue, uh, the 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 people who ran the concert of the Slayer show in San Diego, California, on the tenth. On on um, what's today? On two days ago, it was the big, the opening day of the tour, I believe. Yeah, the opening day of the Slayer tour, the farewell tour. So they oversold the show. It was general. By the way, it's general admission throughout. Same ticket price anywhere in the in the uh, arena. So they oversold the show and decided to mark off places on the floor where you could not walk. And the Slayer crowd was it was so crowded and so oversold that um, they could not control the crowd from staying inside the yellow lines. So here is them stopping the tour, the concert. They stopped the concert so the guy at the venue could tell everybody to move away from the uh, fire marshal slots. And the audience is saying, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, right. We're going to move. We're at a Slayer show. You oversold the concert. Too many tickets sold so you could make more money. And you want us to squeeze in so you can so you can have a, a fire exit? Good luck. So Tom Araya, from, uh, the bass player, has to get out there. And uh, he's standing next to the guy. He, and he's, like, trying to calm the crowd down. He has to get in front of the microphone and... and uh, stop a riot from happening. You really had to stop the concert? Yeah, we live in a society of rules, but we're at a Slayer show. All right, there you go. Come on, please, please, please clear the aisle. You had to stop the concert. The place is fucking packed, too. I mean, it is packed. So, I wonder what would happen if they refuse to move. Would they just not do the show? Send everybody home? All right, and there you go. There, that's good. From the files of the rock and roll geek, it's the douchebag clip of the week. All right, it's not Slayer. The douchebag doesn't go to Slayer. It goes to the venue and the promoter. Oh, I... Uh, no! Ah, uh, all right. There's proof that I'm not snorting coke on in on the show. Okay, friends. All right. I have an email from BJ Lisko, friend of the show. Greetings, Michael Butler, friend of the show. BJ Lisko here, sending you the brand new, never before, never before heard elsewhere, Turbo Lovers track, debutanted which is the lead track of our forthcoming album, Almost Greatest Hits, Latest and Best, due this summer. Hope you dig it and might consider premiering on an upcoming episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. After the album is released, I'll be sure to send you a copy, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be getting in touch to set up a co-host donation. Oh, 
to pay to play a few more tracks of the, as well as shoot the shit on all things rock and roll. All right. Well, since BJ Lisko is a is a monthly donor, and he's going to be doing a co-host donation, which you two can do, two friends. You send me, I don't know, what, I don't remember what it is. It's on, if you click the link on rockandrollgeek.com, for a certain amount of money, you can come on and co-host the show with me. Yes, Paola is my friend. So here you go, brand new Turbo Lovers debutanted. Debutanted. Friend of the show, BJ Lisko, his band Turbo Lovers. Thanks for sending me that, BJ Lisko. I really appreciate it, friend. All right. 
So this was in the news uh, last week, I think. Let me find the headline. Gibson Guitar Maker, or uh, Guitar Maker Gibson Brands Files for Bankruptcy. Storied Guitar Maker Gibson Brands Incorporated filed for bankruptcy protection Tuesday as the company has struggled with its debt load after a series of acquisitions. The company filed for Chapter 11 in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court, blah, blah, blah. It said it will continue to operate during the proceedings as it focused on reorganizing around its core business. Gibson has been struggling with debt it took on to finance acquisitions of home entertainment and audio equipment makers years ago. So Gibson bought a bunch of home inter- they were they changed their uh, business model and tried and decided to go into the electronics business and the speaker business and all kinds of shit. What they forgot to do was continue making decent guitars. I don't think Gibson has made any decent guitars in a long time. And also, for, first of all, little uh commentary here good riddance to gibson guitars first of all uh they they have they will they have these things called patent trolls they go along and sue independent guitar makers for copyright infringement for um billy rowe guitar player for the butlers has a guitar has a really great guitar company by the way called rock and roll relics uh, they sued him for like, and he had to settle for like, I don't know, thousands and thousands, like 25 grand or something like that. Just to, uh, just to not, I don't know. They said, we'll settle for 25 grand, which is essentially patent trolls. But I don't know what they said. His guitars look like theirs or something like that. I don't know. But there was a, an, a thing on, on Sirius. Um, these guys were talking, I forget which show, it was debatable or something like that. I, li- I listen to this station called Volume on Sirius. It's like a music talk. Eddie Trunk's got a show on there. And these other guys were, were had a panel on, and they were talking about um, that guitar, that all the guitar companies are in, in big trouble, and, and sales of guitars have, have plummeted in the past few years, and, and this and that. Uh, but in reality, the reason the guitar, the Gibson's sales have plummeted is because they haven't made good guitars since probably mid nineties. I mean, I, I have several Gibson Thunderbirds and the later Gibson Thunderbirds are pieces of shit. They sound like garbage. I, the only ones that sound good or maybe the latest ones were maybe, maybe late eighties. The ones from the seventies I like a lot, but, uh, Yeah. So screw Gibson for suing for suing uh, my guitar player Billy Rowe, and good riddance to him. But I don't think they're going to go anywhere. They're just filing bankruptcy so they don't have to pay their debts. And the guy from Fender came and said that Gibson came along and said that Gibson's travails are all of their own making. Fender CEO Andy Mooney has stated that fellow guitar giant Gibson faces blah 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 brought about its own financial troubles. But I, but I was also in. Gibbs, uh, Fender says, "Oh, their company's doing great. Fender's like making big money. Fender generated five hundred million dollars of revenue in two thousand seventeen." But in this, on that series, I'm getting sidetracked and distracted. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But in that, on one of the guys from uh, Fender was on that that volume show talking about how guitar, how guitar companies or sales are plummeting. The guy from Fender says their sales are plummeting. But in this article, he says, oh, we're, we're making tons of money, hand over fist. So the guy from Fender says, um, the secret to Fender's success seems to be partly down to the launch of online learning platform Fender Play which aims to encourage young guitarists led by the statistics that 45% of all Fender guitars sold go to first time guitar players yeah Fender Squires which uh, I don't think are great guitar players maybe they're good beginner guitars I don't know but anyway Gibson's filing bankruptcy good good riddance to them if they leave maybe you should start making good guitars again that's that's why their sales have, have plummeted because their guitars are shit and they sue everybody and they're overpriced. <sighs> All right. I think that's going to about do it for me, friends. My mouth is getting parched and it is late. I've been up since four 
a.m. I went fishing today, and uh, boy, did I have a good time. I didn't catch any legal halibuts, but I had a good time. But I've been up all day. Next week, I'm going on an entire fishing weekend up in Shelter Cove, and I can't wait. Let me take a sip of this fine Tecate here. Ah, all right. I'm going to close out with a song now. That I got this a package in the mail from <clears throat> from Mark Williams. He is is from. He lives in Australia, I think. Is he Australia? It can be it can be Canada. I'm not sure. I think he's in Australia. But he sent me about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 16 or 17 CDs in the mail. And one of them I'm going to play, a song I'm going to play for you now from him. Thanks, um, Mark Williams, for sending me those. I really appreciate it. He sent me a whole bunch of punk rock CDs as well a long time ago. And I was going to do a punk rock episode and play play some of these songs that he sent me. But I haven't gotten around to it yet. I may get around to that someday. But thank you, Mark, for sending me these. I'm, I really appreciate it. I'm going to play something from one of the CDs he sent me. It is a band called The Brought Low, which I actually had part of this album. They have an album. The album is called Right on Time. The Brought Low is the name of the band. Came out in 2006. I have one, I have some of the songs from this album, but I'm going to play you a song from that. Before I do, though, friends, thank you for listening. This show's a little bit disjointed, but hey, aren't they all? I'm going to go to bed, but before I do... Let me tell you how you can reach me. You can find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. There's a, a Rock and Roll Geek Facebook uh, page, which I did not create, but I do maintain. Go Request to be added to that, and I will um, instantly <coughs> approve you if you're a listener of the, or a friend of the Rock and Roll Geek show. You can find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. You can find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek, Don't Ask. Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. You can find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. I think that's enough ways to reach me. Oh, by the way, there's a new bathroom wall Rock and Roll Geek shirt coming out that looks pretty, pretty good. Stay tuned for that. I will post. I think I posted a picture of it on the Facebook it might be on the uh, Rock and Roll Geek uh, page. I'm not sure. I, if it's if it's not, I will post it when it comes out. But it's a cool shirt. Alex made a really cool uh, Stay Frosty Rock and Roll Geek shirt. I like it. So stay tuned for that. All right, enough of that, friends. I'm going to close out with the song sent me by Mark Williams. This is a band called called The Brought Low. This song is Blues for Cubby. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I really, really Really appreciate it. We will talk to you very soon.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs> 